the Mutable Instruments Grids has a number of different options that you can enter. Unfortunately, it's not at all obvious what the option settings are, so it's a good idea to mark down what you last set them to and keep an eye when you go about resetting them. Now, to enter the options mode, you need to hold down the tap reset button for about a second. I'll warn you ahead of time that this could reset where your downbeat is in your pattern right now, so you may need to reset your downbeat after you come out of options. So I'll press and hold tap, and the LED being on constant indicates I'm in settings mode. Now these six knobs control six different options. These LEDs for fill tell you what the setting of the option is. For example, this top knob sets clock resolution. Right now I'm at the default of four pulses per quarter note, which has this knob turned all the way to the left. Basically we're on a 16th note grid matching the 16th notes of my sequencer. However, I can change this to eight pulses per quarter note, and you now hear that the drum pattern is basically running at half speed. And if you happen to be using 24 pulses per quarter note, you want to go all the way to the right. Of course, this doesn't make sense since I'm only feeding it a 16th note sequence or four pulses per quarter note from my arpeggiator, but it makes a lot of sense if you're running off of, say, a MIDI rig, etc. I'll put this back to four pulses per quarter note. This knob controls what the tap tempo button does. You can either keep it with all LEDs off, which is the default of this resets the top of your pattern. Or if you turn it over to the right with all the LEDs lit, this now becomes a tap tempo button. That only works obviously if you have this set to something other than full counterclockwise, which says listen to your external clock. I'll put it back to being reset at the top of my sequence. The third knob controls swing. When all the LEDs are off by current position, the chaos control adds those random fills that we heard earlier. When those LEDs are on, this instead becomes a swing factor. And again, that only works if you're on internal clock, not external. You cannot add swing to an external straight ahead clock signal. I'll put that back to its default setting. This bottom white knob controls what signals go out of the bottom row of jacks. The default, with all the LEDs off, says use these as separate accents for those three drum channels. Now you hear different notes in my sequence being accented. Turning to where these are on, now splits the uses of these. The first jack output is still an accent, but now it's for the three combined channels. The second output is a clock output, one pulse per clock. Doesn't make much sense when I'm using an external clock, but when you're running under internal clock, you use this to go ahead and slave external sequencers to your grids. And then the third one becomes a reset output to tell you where the top of the pattern is. Again, very useful for resetting external sequencers when grids is your master clock. Otherwise, the default setting for it to be an individual accent out for each of those channels. The middle white control decides whether or not your outputs are triggers or gates. No LEDs illuminated. Say, just go ahead and use the normal one millisecond trigger output. Let's turn this clockwise. These now become gate outputs. They can sustain a note. Doesn't make a big difference in triggering my drum sounds, but if I was triggering other modules downstream or triggering, say, an envelope generator, it would make a big difference. You can also use this if you find that the one millisecond long trigger output from the grids is not long enough to reliably trigger your drum sounds downstream. I'll put this back to its default. And finally, this last control is very interesting. It decides whether or not grids is a topographic drum sequencer, or when you change it to where the LEDs are all off, it now becomes a Euclidean sequencer. Now, these three controls determine the length of the patterns going out outputs one, two, and three. And then the three green controls decide how many beats to distribute across that length of pattern. Let me take my accent off for now. Press and hold the tap button to go back to normal operation. Go ahead and pull my two pico drum sounds, two and three, out of this for now. Let's focus on drum channel one, which is that kick drum sound. If I set the pattern length to one, 
and then dial up a lot of beats to fill that pattern, it's very easy to go ahead and have one pulse on every single note of my pattern. As I increase my pattern length, those pulses start getting spread out across my pattern. So you can have a very sparse pattern. Go ahead and reset my downbeat there. Change it to fill a few more pulses into that pattern. Bring up my outputs two and three. Give them some length as well. Start putting some pulses across their patterns. Go ahead and have a nice long pattern for output three and then give it some additional triggers as well. a way of creating either what may seem like some world rhythm type patterns or almost completely random patterns by just having random numbers of beats and even random links so that they run at different cycle links against each other. And to put it back to being a normal drum sequencer, I press and hold the tap button until the LED is on solid and just go ahead and adjust this control back to all LEDs on and now I'm back to being a topographic drum sequencer. Press and hold to exit this mode. Now we're back to picking our patterns and setting our density as those patterns. Adding some chaos in. I'm going ahead and adding some accents back to my sequence by triggering this envelope generator, opening up the filter. So it's a very handy little module. It might be easy to ignore it because there's so many newer trigger modules available but it's still very useful with a lot of control, including voltage control over how dense your patterns are and what pattern you're using.